Roll mic. Let's talk about betrayal. All of us have felt it, right? As a former believer myself, I expected that God would hear my voice. I expected that God would listen to my prayers. And I expected that when I was young, I might not be mature enough to understand how God communicates back to me. After all, I had never seen it happen with me or anybody else. Yep, I heard all the crazy things that people said. I was very confused by it. I was hoping to maybe learn something special about it. But one thing's for certain, they never heard God and God never spoke to them. They don't really act like it happened. You know, they, they do their event and then when everybody leaves, let's say church or small group or large group or whatever group you got going on, everybody goes back to normal. Not as though a deity just spoke to them. Okay, so that's why I say for certain, don't get hung up on that, or do. I realized as I was getting older that if I had a personal loving savior, that that savior would honor what was meant when we use the words personal and loving. And as a former Christian, it finally got to the point as an adult where upon reflection, it became clear God was anything but personal or loving. You see and hear a lot of people talk about how God is just around the corner. They'll use all these figures of speech where God is just out of reach. He's just out of reach. And all you gotta do is have faith. Only when you have that faith to kind of take you around that corner, God just turned the other corner, right? We all hear our friends and our religious people, loved ones, family members, say things like this if they're religious. The reason for that is they're making excuses for not finding that which they're hoping to find. Go ask any Christian right now. Do they want to see God face to face? If they are a willing believer, they will say, yes, yes. I will tell you right now, if the Christian God does exist, the first thing I would like to do so as to stop wasting my time is to see that being face to face. Right now is a good time, actually. I mean, we all knew how that was gonna end, right? <laughs> when you're faced with a certain type of disappointment, continuously, we now see that as the norm. That becomes the new expectation. Even though we use language that signifies the, the opposite expectation, our behavior actually demonstrates that we're not expecting uh, a reciprocal relationship with God. We are expecting to go it alone. We are expecting to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We are expecting to suffer in the hard times. And the only helping hand we're expecting to really see or grab hold to is that of another human being. That is why we have such things as relief efforts or charity or even government. But if it were true that God was real, and if it were true that God was personable and loving and seen himself as a father and us as his children, there might come a day when he actually acts like it. We understand exactly how simple it is to demonstrate that you don't care enough for the other person's well-being to make an intervention. The hardest part of my deconversion was the aftermath 
of understanding that if God was real, he did betray me. That's hard to get past because it's a bitter moment. And as a believer, you're not willing that that bitter moment sour what could otherwise be a beneficial relationship. But once you move past that part, just like you would with another human, you realize there's nothing there for you. If another human betrays you, and that's just how they operate with you, in those times when you need them the most, they let you down. If there's times when you're looking to God to really help you and to do only what we think God can do, and God is just passing the other corner as you're pursuing Him, then even if God is real, wouldn't the Christian say, you know what, if this is only ever going to be one-sided, I'm out. I got to take off, man. It's time to go somewhere else. And even if that's just among my fellow man, then that's where I belong. And that's where I fit best. And that's called a humanist, by the way. It's what a lot of atheists identify as. This is me kind of sharing with you. I know what it's like to feel like God has betrayed you. And I know what it's like to feel like you still don't want to turn your back on what you've come to believe is the most meaningful part of existence, your relationship with that God. I want you to know I sympathize with that. I truly do. But I also urge you to consider how you conduct yourself in that relationship with that God if you wouldn't otherwise do that with anybody else who treats you the same way. I'm not advocating that anybody give up something meaningful to them, but I am advocating for an honest discourse on how we feel and interact with that thing, which we tell others is true and beneficial for them, if in fact it's not for you. I'd be interested to hear your comments and your feedback and where you are in this journey. Whether you are a Christian or a non-believer or have ever felt this way, if you kind of approached a deconversion moment or even just a moment where you were confused about things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you out there. Leave it in the comments.